and have you always accepted that when you as an MP are given responsibility for public resources, that they are solely to be utilised for the purpose of your public duties? Um, yes, but obviously party, if you're talking about party political work, um, we would sort of believe that's all a part of our public duties. Two different political systems and two very different approaches to allegations of politicians behaving badly. In Victoria, a very public series of hearings of the state's anti-corruption body has been looking into branch stacking allegations. Former state Labor Minister Adam Somurek was in the witness box today. Mr Somurek, see you at four o'clock. It was, it was great. But at the federal level, a story with eerily similar elements is being dismissed by the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, Minister, what do you make of the allegations against Federal Minister Michael Sukar? Well, that were dealt with a year ago by the Department of Finance and found that there was nothing further to investigate. Michael Sukar is the Assistant Treasurer in the Morrison Government and the MP for the Melbourne seat of Deakin. Over the years, he has often been in the news more because of his role as a factional player in the Victorian Liberal Party. What is different about the story is that beyond the similarity of allegations of taxpayer funds being used to pay for party political operatives doing party business, is that scrutiny of the matter appears to have been swept under the carpet by a federal bureaucracy which says it does not have investigatory powers and which has been pressured by Mr Sukar to keep its inquiries secret. It's no surprise politics is dirty business. Last year, The Age and Sydney Morning Herald reported allegations that Mr Sukar and Kevin Andrews, the former Howard Government Cabinet Minister, employed party operatives in their electorate offices at taxpayer expense to stack branches to amass power for their faction. Mr Sukar denied any involvement in branch stacking at the time and called for the Department of Finance to investigate the claims. The department about. subsequently released a one-page statement saying it had found insufficient evidence of any wrongdoing by Mr Sukar, a finding the minister used to claim he had been exonerated. But in light of subsequent information, the department's findings might not have been so surprising. Mr Suko, some questions about the rewarding of public resources. Can you answer some questions, please? Fast forward to last night and more revelations about the affair on 60 Minutes and in the nine newspapers. Morning factional phone calls times three, factional phone calls times six. The nine investigation revealed that investigators from a law firm which once employed Mr Suka failed to interview or contact key witnesses. It also failed to obtain or examine documentary evidence including emails such as this one from a factional operative to Michael Sukar, which clearly links a number of elected office staff to factional activities. Further, it emerged that while the Department of Finance had spoken to Mr Sukar and Mr Andrews for its review, the details won't be made public. In response to a Freedom of Information request, the Department wrote that the two MPs spoke to the review on a strictly private and confidential basis and that they had made strong representations against the document's release. What powers does the Department have to do these investigations? We don't have any, any statutory powers, it's an administrative action. The paper trail revealed last night shows an unpleasant series of exchanges between Sukar and others about a female Liberal Minister, Jane Hume. ...was waiting for her retirement from politics, but sadly it wasn't there. This was at a time when senior figures in the Victorian Liberal Party were being accused of bullying a number of female Liberal MPs, including Julia Banks. In an email separately obtained by 7.30, Michael Sukar's brother Paul who was on the taxpayer-funded payroll in 2017 and 2018, encourages an associate to send an email to Ms Banks attacking her credibility, integrity and character. Paul Sukar responds to receiving a draft of the email with a message, Great letter, send it off. In statements to 7.30 today, Mr Sukar and Mr Andrews have once again denied any wrongdoing. The Prime Minister has declared the matter to be concluded and, with no anti-corruption body at the federal level, taxpayers will remain in the dark about just what has happened. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.